My name is Emily Davis, and I am 21 years old. After graduating from culinary school, I began working at the coffee shop my parents own and operate. We have many regular customers, and I absolutely love this beloved spot in our town. I have tremendous respect for my parents who have run this shop for so long. Although working while studying was more challenging than I thought, I was satisfied with my fulfilling daily life. However, a call from Bob disrupted this routine. The call came out of the blue. My wife had an accident. Bob sounded unusually flustered over the phone. Although my parents and I didn't know the details of the accident, we were deeply worried about my sister-in-law. Bob asked us to look after his children while he was at the hospital, and we readily agreed. My nieces and nephew are still quite young and need a lot of attention. Before heading to the hospital, Bob brought the two children to our coffee shop. They seemed bewildered by what was happening, but I welcomed them into the shop to reassure them. We received another call from Bob two hours later. We breathed a sigh of relief when we learned that my sister-in-law's life was not in danger. However, she had a severe sprain in her foot and needed to rest at home for a while. So Bob asked us to continue looking after the children for a bit longer. I was torn. My parents have the coffee shop to run, and I also work there as an employee, so it would be impossible for us to do this every day. After discussing with my parents, we agreed that I would take care of my nieces and nephew for about two weeks. At first, I was nervous about whether I could take proper care of my nieces and nephew. However, they quickly warmed up to me, and they were well-behaved without being particularly demanding, so I managed to pull through. When things got tough as I was not accustomed to looking after children, my mother was there to support me. Two weeks later, the need for me to look after my nieces and nephew had passed, and life returned to normal. But then, I received another call from Bob. He said, My wife is still not feeling well. I would appreciate it if you could look after the kids when she asks for help. Honestly, I wasn't sure what to do at the time. In the end, I couldn't bear to leave my nieces and nephew unattended, so I replied, I can do it occasionally. Sure enough, just a few days later, my sister-in-law sent me a message saying, Could you watch the kids tomorrow? I replied, Okay. On the day my sister-in-law had requested my help, I went to pick up my nephews in the morning, dropped them off at kindergarten, and then brought them back home in the afternoon to take care of them. My mother occasionally dropped by to check on things. In the evening, after dinner and a bath for the kids, we waited for Bob to pick them up. When Bob arrived, I handed him the dinner my mother had brought for him and his wife. He said, that's a lifesaver, as he took the children and went home. Honestly, I wondered if all this was necessary, and I was exhausted from the unfamiliar tasks. However, I couldn't leave Bob's family to fend for themselves. Both my mother and I did what we could. Then, a few days later, I got another message from my sister-in-law. Could you help out with the kids again? Just like the previous time, I went to pick up the children in the morning and headed to the kindergarten. The kindergarten teachers seemed to have remembered me, which made the drop-off process smoother. The boys waved goodbye, saying, See you, Emily! and happily went off to kindergarten without any fuss. After that, I helped out at the cafe where my parents worked. However, it was only a short while before it was time to pick up the children again. My father pointed out the time, and I quickly left the cafe. At the kindergarten, there were already a few people waiting to pick up their children. As I waited for the boys to come out, someone called me from behind. Emily? I turned around in surprise to see a senior I knew from school. Ashley? It was an unexpected reunion. Long time no see. She told me her child was also attending the same kindergarten as my nephew's. I wanted to chat with Ashley, but it wasn't really a situation where we could stand around and talk, so we exchanged contact information and parted ways. The next day, Ashley came to the cafe during my shift. My parents, seeing the situation, told us to take our time and chat when there were fewer customers. I decided to take advantage of my parents' offer and chat with Ashley. It seemed that Ashley, my senior from school, really took a liking to our cafe, which made me quite happy. However, she suddenly became serious as if she remembered something and began to speak. By the way, I saw your nephew's mom the other day. I blinked in surprise at the unexpected topic 
and just nodded in response. Really? Yeah, I didn't speak to her, but I have talked to her before, so I'm certain it was her. But there's something. Ashley seemed to struggle to find the right words, piquing my interest, so I urged her to go on. The contents of her words left me astonished. Moreover, it seemed my mom overheard Ashley's conversation, and our eyes met. After Ashley left, I asked mom what she thought about what had been discussed. Let's keep an eye on the situation a little longer. I nodded in agreement. Then, one day, I got a sudden call from Bob. I couldn't pick up immediately, and the call ended. But noticing multiple missed calls in my call log, I quickly called him back. What the hell is going on? I was confused and asked him back. What? What happened? Bob spoke in a voice that seemed to suppress his anger. Apparently, he went home to pick up something he'd forgotten and found the kids home alone in a house that should have been empty. I was shocked at Bob's story. At the same time, a question arose. Why am I the one being yelled at? My question seemed to further ignite Bob's anger. My wife told me she asked you to take care of the kids today, and yet you left them alone and you have the nerve to talk back to me? I was taken aback by Bob's words, but there were several things I couldn't agree with, so I retorted. Yes, your wife sent me a message, but I told her I couldn't do it today. Mom fell ill last night, and we are short-staffed. I have to work at the cafe and don't have time to look after the kids. Upon hearing my explanation, Bob went quiet. According to my wife, then asked me a question. She said every time she asked you to take care of the kids, you complained and demanded to be paid. Is this true? I couldn't help but raise my voice in the middle of the conversation. What? I've never said anything like that. I've never explicitly asked for money I've spent on the kids, and Mom should know that too. If you have doubts, why don't you ask her? When I retorted in an angry tone, Bob fell completely silent. Then he muttered, So what was that story about the money my wife was talking about? I have no idea. You should ask your wife about it. When I stated clearly, Bob, sounding tired, said, I'll do that. Although I was hesitant to pile on with my next revelation, I couldn't stay silent after hearing the current conversation and decided to share what I'd heard from Senior Ashley. After hearing the story, Bob said in a genuinely exhausted voice, give me some time to think, and hung up the phone. Afterwards, as I started to calm down, I became worried about Bob and decided to tell Mom what I had said to him. A while passed without any word from Bob, and during that time, my parents and I were worried. However, a few days later, another message arrived from Bob's wife. It was the same as usual. She was asking me to take care of the kids, and at first, I thought of refusing. I had been doing so much for her and the kids out of goodwill, but knowing that I had been talked about behind my back, I felt ridiculed. But Mom stopped me. She told me to contact Bob before replying to Bob's wife, and I forwarded the message to him. A few minutes later, a reply came from Bob. It seemed he had been distressed, but he seemed to have made up his mind after my message. After hearing Bob's feelings, I replied to Bob's wife, okay, and went to pick up the kids as usual. After taking the kids to kindergarten, I contacted someone. Hanging up the phone, I braced myself. Everything was ready. When I arrived at the coffee shop, Bob was already there. Bob's face was tense, whether from nervousness or anxiety. It was the first time I saw him like this, and I hesitated about how to approach him, but then Mom went up to him and said, I'll pick up the kids, so don't worry. You need to see for yourself and focus on talking things out with your wife. Emily, I'm counting on you. Bob, looking startled by Mom's words, nodded. Then I nodded back at Mom, too. Okay, I'm off. I set off for Bob's house along with him. Bob paused in front of his house, fumbling for his keys. I noticed his hands shaking, but pretended not to see. Faint voices of my sister-in-law and a few other women were audible from inside the house. Bob unlocked the door and slowly pushed it open. We stepped inside quietly, trying not to make a sound. The chatter was now clearer. So, how's your foot doing? I could hear my sister-in-law replying to the woman's question. Oh, it's fine. Almost completely healed. Oh, I knew it, I thought. The strange feeling I'd had recently seemed to be resolved. 
For a moment, I was distracted, but I snapped back to attention and focused on what my sister-in-law was saying. But once it's fully healed, my husband will probably find out, and I won't be able to laze around like I can now. Oh, right! Your sister-in-law and her parents are looking after the kids, aren't they? How lucky! Yeah, really lucky that Emily isn't married. I'm so grateful to have an unemployed single homebody living at home. Hearing my sister-in-law's words, I felt my body getting hot with anger. I had suspected that we might be being exploited by my sister-in-law, but I hadn't imagined she would think this way. I reached my limit, burst open the door to the living room, and stormed in. My sister-in-law looked shocked when she saw me. I glared at her and said, Yes, I'm not married and I'm living at home, but I'm not exactly idle. I thought we were helping out because you guys were in trouble. I didn't think you would talk about it like this. But my sister-in-law seemed more interested in why I was here and how I got into the house. She looked at me and said, well, Why are you here? How did you get into the house? I felt a tap on my shoulder and stepped back. When she finally noticed Bob, her eyes widened. In a voice as cold as mine, if not colder, Bob said, I let us in. You've been lying to me all this time. You're the worst. You've been using the money I gave you for yourself instead of giving it to Emily, haven't you? My sister-in-law turned as white as a sheet. I approached my sister-in-law's friends and told them it was time to leave. Everyone left with awkward expressions on their faces. Among them, there was one person who made eye contact with me as she left. That was Senior Ashley. Ashley had previously had interactions with my sister-in-law. However, she seemed to have some concerns about my sister-in-law's recent behavior, and when we unexpectedly met again, she offered to help with this situation. Once all of the friends left, my sister-in-law began to talk, crying. To make her story short, this was the story she excused. Ever since the birth of their second child, taking care of the kids became increasingly difficult but Bob was always busy with work and couldn't help with childcare or housework, which was tough. When she got injured, my mother and I began to help out and things got a lot easier. Because of this, she ended up relying on us. About the money Bob gave her, she had not had any disposable income since getting married and she couldn't resist using the money because of this. Frankly, I wasn't convinced by my sister-in-law's excuses. Perhaps sensing my feelings... Bob suggested it was time to leave for the day. I took his advice and left Bob's house. When I got home, my mother was waiting with a worried look on her face. It seemed like my dad was looking after my nephews, so I took this chance to explain everything to my mother. She made a complicated expression and said, I see, it's a problem between those two now, and went back to my nephews. I followed her. My nephews, who knew nothing of the situation, greeted me with smiles and called out, Aunt Emily! Although I felt a complex mix of emotions, I did my best not to show it on my face and responded to my nephews. Several hours later, Bob returned home. He said he would be staying at our parents' house for the night. My mother, seeming to understand Bob's thoughts, merely responded with, I see. After putting his kids to bed, Bob explained his decision to our parents and me. I won't divorce her this time, but if she repeats the same mistake, then I'll consider divorce. Emily, I'm sorry for what you've been through. And you too, Mom. No, it's okay, but are you sure that's what you want, bro? Worried about their relationship, I asked Bob. He nodded and said, Yeah, after talking to my wife, I realized I'm partly to blame too. We've decided to give it another try together. I asked Bob what he meant. He said, I've been all about work and never really paid attention to my wife. I also left the kids entirely up to her. I now realize that this might have put undue pressure on her, and I've been unfair to our kids. I should have spent more quality time with them. Listening to Bob, I honestly had mixed feelings, but Mom said, I get it. As an individual, it's hard to forgive what your wife did to us. But as a wife and a mother, I can't say I don't understand the feelings at all. If this is the decision you both have made, I won't oppose it, but make sure you don't involve others in your problems again. At Mom's words, Bob nodded, biting his lip. Since then, neither Bob nor my sister-in-law have asked anything of me. Especially, I haven't seen her even once. It must be awkward for her to face me.
My father is angry, saying she can't even apologize, but truthfully, I prefer not to see my sister-in-law to avoid bringing back unpleasant memories. When I told Bob this, he promised, I understand. I'll try to avoid having you and her meet as much as possible. Thanks to that, my everyday life returned to normal. Hearing the sound of the bell, I turned around. At the entrance stood Bob, with my nephews at his sides. Letting go of Bob's hand, my nephews raced over to me first, calling out my name. Aunt Emily! I happily responded with a smile to my adorable nephews. While the kids were chatting with my parents over cake, Bob quietly told me that although sister-in-law was remorseful, however, she disliked the kids going to see me because they were fond of me. But hearing that, I couldn't help but think she had brought it upon herself. There may come a time in the future when I have to face her again. However, right now, it doesn't seem likely that I will forget what sister-in-law did to me anytime soon.